We've got the Warriors and Wizards, followed by the Timberwolves and Lakers. But before we get to our doubleheader, we've got an hour-long TNT NBA tip-off presented by Auto Trader, during which we will announce the starters for the All-Star Game in Charlotte. Bernie Johnson, Shaquille O'Neal, Kenny the Jet Smith, and Charles Barkley at your service tonight. Before we go any further, I want to join the chorus of all those who are sending their best to Victor Oladipo. Oh, this, one of the most popular guys out there, just a great dude and, and such a talent in this league. And to be lost for the season now after what happened last night, it's a ruptured quad tendon, and he is out for the season. Ernie, number one, Victor, you know we love you. We love having you on the talent show. You're a hell of a player. I almost started crying last night, Ernie, because I knew what it was. That was the same injury that ended my career. Yep. And when I saw it, I said, he tore his quad. And uh, it's, it's awful for the Pacers. Uh, but, man, he's such a great kid and a great player. All our thoughts and prayers are with you, Victor. Wish you well, brother. Yeah, you know what? You know, it's, it's so unfortunate. You know, Victor is, like, like Charles, I'm going to reiterate, one of the good guys in the NBA. Uh, I've, I've known him since he'd gotten into the league. It, he's, it's pretty funny because he and his guys that he uh, associate with, uh, you know, Jay and all of his camp, when they're in L.A., it's like, where's the gym, Kenny? You got the keys to the gym? Open up. And we get to in the gym and just work out, you know, for the last couple of years and uh, coming to events and going to his things. So I'm just sick. I was sick last mm. night just hearing that, you know, and uh, knowing that it was possibly that injury after it came out with, you know, with Charles, which how serious it was with Charles, you know, just wishing you and his best. And his mom is great. The, the good Whole thing. family's great. The good thing, it's the same injury that Tony Parker had. And he's a lot younger than Tony Parker. And Tony Parker's playing very well. So that, that's encouraging. I was already going to retire, so it had no effect upon me. But call, I would call Tony Parker right away and say, hey, tell me how you did your rehab. But Tony Parker's been playing very well this year. Yeah, and he, was, he was a young guy. He was hustling for ball. Freak injury. Uh, it happened. But, you know, the good thing is, you know, everyone's wishing him well. He's going to get the surge or whatever. He's going to do rehab. And I believe he's going to come back even stronger. Yeah, prayers up for uh, Victor Oladipo from all of us here. Uh, as we get set to announce the All-Star starters, a brief explanation of how the voting works. Voting by you, the fans, counts 50%. Balloting by a media panel counts for 25%. And the final 25% comes from player ballots. When all of those numbers are put in a computer, it spits this out. This is 17 pages worth of names and numbers. And uh, at the top of the, you know, if you're the top three front court and top two back court in each conference, those are the 10 starters. If there was a tie in the weighted score, the fan vote is the tiebreaker, and that did come into play in the Western Conference. Here's the way it turned out. In the West, as we reveal the starters uh -oh, for the All-Star uh -oh. Game in Charlotte, we begin. This was the best the fans have ever did. I have no LeBron, problems with anybody. LeBron James well, let's see. will be the captain on one side. He's tied with Kobe now with 15 All-Star Game starts, averaging 27 points, 8 rebounds, 7 assists on the year. Joining him along the front line, Kevin Durant. Ten straight All-Star appearances in this, his 12th season, averaging 28 points a game, which is number four in the league. All-Star game MVP in 2012, mm. four-time scoring champion, and two-time horse champion, 09 <laughs> and 10. Paul George is the other starter uh -oh. in the front court. He's played great all year. 27 points a game is number eight in the league. Career high in points, rebounds, and steals this year. He won a tiebreaker over Anthony Davis for oh. the starting spot in the Western Conference. Wow. We, go, we go to the backcourt. Steph Curry, sixth straight All-Star appearance. He's averaging 29 points a night, which is number three in the league. He's fifth in three-point percentage. They're 28 and eight when he plays, five and six when he doesn't, and he makes it look Steph effortless. And James Harden joins him in the backcourt. Seventh straight All-Star selection. I don't even know how much else you have to say about this guy. Oh, yeah, 61 last he night. He's the league in scoring. Yeah, 61 36. last night. He's fourth in assists. Yeah, 61 last night. 31 games of at least 30, including 21 straight 30-point games. Derek yeah, 61 Rose, last night. Derek Rose and Russell Westbrook tied for third. Wow. Behind Steph Curry 
and James Harden. And so that Anthony Davis situation with Paul George well, was Paul George, no disrespect to Anthony Davis, but uh, Paul George deserved to be a starter. I, I saw, obviously, when we had to pick out our reserves, I saw both lists today. In my 30-some years in the NBA, I thought they, the fans and coaches and media got it perfect. Well, well, it, it, it's a combination of all three, so it's what I, not just one. So what, what, was just... The, what was the fan? Well, we're going to the fans would have wanted it. We're going to we're going to reveal that right, right that's now. What, so so then here's you know. here's you the know. way here's the way the fans wanted it. The fans okay, wanted see, they wanted James Doncic and Bro. Kevin Durant. That, they didn't why. want Paul George or Anthony Davis. Oh, that don't make it starting. right. Starting and Steph Curry and Derrick Rose were the fan choices. Okay. In their balloting now on the media side LeBron Durant and Anthony Davis with Harden and Curry in fact Harden ahead of Curry in the backcourt among the media and well, on the he deserves that and on the player ballot James Durant and Davis Curry and Harden in the backcourt so actually when you look at it Paul George trailed in the player vote and he trailed in the media vote but the fan vote, that's where Anthony Davis was fifth, and that's what cost him a starting spot. Mm. Well, Paul George deserved to start, but I, I also have a problem with Damon Lillard. The players should have him higher than that. Damon well, Lillard's, uh, Hey, she, Damon, she, you see where the, your peers are thinking? When they come to Portland. <laughs> he, should, he should be higher than five. And, and you touched on James Harden. I mean, again, when you saw what happened and, and what was the headline in the New York paper, Madison Square Harden, I yeah. mean, he went for 61 points. <laughs> last night. I mean, we understand that the Knicks aren't a very good basketball team. Well, that's an understatement. You know, but 61 points is 61 points. No question. It, there's no way around it. And his ability to score in multiple ways, the last guy I've seen to do this is Kobe Bryant, to be able to score this easy. He has been, he's the Kobe Bryant of this era, scoring at this kind of clip doing things I've, I haven't seen. And he's known for the three, and he went Shaq five on his list. last night. Damn, and Shaq. Of course, you know. He must have been pretty yeah, good in your day. Yeah, yeah back in 2000 good. to have I'm going to have to go like back that. and look at some old videotapes. He went he went five for 20 last night. You know, he's known for the three ball. You know, he's very deadly behind the three ball. Went to the free throw line 20 times. But Kenny's right. He's very hard to stop. My only fear for him is he's doing a lot of scoring doing a lot. last month. Hopefully there's he some doesn't people get tired that are, in the postseason. There's, there's some people, Shaq, and you, Charles, you can kind of jump in on this. That's saying, oh, there's probably a bunch of guys in the league that could do what he's doing if they had that, that shot opportunity. I don't believe that. I only believe there's one or two guys that could get 50 consistently at this clip. Now, you guys were prolific scorers. If you had got the ball that much and, wanted, and you wanted, they needed you to do that much, well, I, could I, you I, score I, I, I at think, that clip? Because uh, I don't know if any, a lot of guys no, can do that no, as uh, being no, an NBA no, player. Uh, no, because, number one, he, James. Said yes or no? No. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Well, well I, th I think Steph Curry and KD are probably the only two guys because they would, those two would be the only two guys who are going to shoot that many threes. Right. But that would be the, the caveat. Like, I can't get 50 a night unless I made five to seven to ten threes. Right. Like, I can get 30 or 40, but... He took 20 last night. Yeah. Right. I mean, so and he, he got the free throw line That's my times. point. Yeah. That's my point. And they're saying that, oh, this is... Oh, a lot of guys... No, a lot... Being a former NBA player, one, the fatigue of it, the mental preparation and everything that he does, a lot of guys can't do that. No. But can he they, maintain it? But can, can he, he maintain, maintain it? He's maintained it for a, longer than I've ever seen. But I don't think you can win. Anyway. I don't think you can win like that. But I don't. Yeah, I don't know if you can win. But God, listen. It's amazing. Fifteen and everyone six. Everyone can do 15 that. Fifteen and six over this twenty-one game stretch, and when he scored at least thirty points, are the there are guys, there aren't ten guys in the NBA that could do that. No, and it's not have, ten. It's like less than five. No. Thank you. Rockets that's what, number. That's what Rockets number five in the West. We will talk a bit later about uh, who we think should be the Western Conference Reserves. That comes a little bit later uh, in our show. Uh, let's get a little uh, Twitter action here. Oh, that's from the Timberwolves. Yeah, Derrick Rose coming close, but not quite close enough. He did win the tiebreaker over Westbrook for the number three spot, but you only got two spots in the backcourt for all-star starters. When we come back, we will announce the starters from the Eastern Conference. Keep it right here. <laughs> Shaquille O'Neal was an unstoppable force in the NBA the moment he stepped onto the court. Not only was he named an all-star as a rookie, but selected as a starter as well. 
Roe Parrish revisits Shaq's first all-star appearance back in 1993 in this episode of Storytime with Shaq. At center is the first rookie to start in an all-star game since 1985. Standing over seven feet tall and weighing 300 pounds, he plays well beyond his 20 years. You know him simply as the Shaq from the Orlando Magic, Shaquille O'Neal. 1993, Utah, your first all-star game, making it as a rookie. Number one, what were your first impressions when you get there? Did you expect to make the all-star game as a rookie? Well, I expected to make the all-star game, but I wasn't expecting to be started. Uh, first of all, before I got there, terrified.com. Why? Because, I mean, all the guys that I dreamed up, you know, dreamed of being, uh, guys that I looked up to, I'm finally there with them. There was one moment at the All Star game that kind of made me relax a little bit. We were doing the team picture, and the guy puts his hand on my shoulder, and I looked down, some big hands. I'm like, who is this? And I looked up, and it was the great Michael Jordan. And he said, I'm proud of you, big fella. You're going to be a great player. So once he said that, the steam just like tss. But after that, I, I kind of learned how to be an All Star performer because it's, it's different. And, you know, it's kind of similar to my thought process of putting on the show for the fans. But an all-star game, you gotta do, you gotta do extra. Come down, cross people up, dribble two more legs, uh, better slam dunks, maybe shoot a three. So after that, I became sort of an all-star expert. So looking back at all those players that you spoke about that you were in awe of, you know you had that Michael Jordan moment, but talk about Pippen, Isaiah Malone, Stockton, Barkley, Robinson, are you able to take all that in at that moment? Do you realize how much greatness you're around when you see all those players out there with you? It was just solidifying the beginning of my greatness. Because when you come in as a rookie and everybody says you're great, and then I made the top 50 team, a lot of people was upset about that. So in my mind, I had to back it up. So by me getting selected to the All-Star game, that was sort of backing it up. I had to put up big numbers, sort of backing it up. But you know, I was just saying to myself when I was sitting in the locker room, Damn, I made it. Medium level juvenile delinquent who didn't start his freshman or sophomore year. Uh, 35 and 1, San Antonio Cole High School, lose the state championship on free throw line. Redeemed myself senior year, 36 and 0. Three years at LSU, number one pick. Everyone says you're the next greatest thing. Maybe this is the start of me being what everybody says I can be. When you're just sitting there watching, you just you know, automatically put yourself in those scenarios. And I used to do it all the time. And then finally, look up and I see the real Charles Barkley walk by. I see the real John Stockton, the real Carl Malone, the guy who I grew up watching, the Admiral, David Robinson, Pat Riley with his, with his $6,000 suit and his silky tie <laughs> and the beautiful hair. Like I'm sitting next to all these people. So maybe what everybody is saying that this young kid will be a great player, maybe it's true. I'll be here. The 2019 All-Star starters will be revealed tomorrow night on TNT at 7 o'clock Eastern time. You both we're part of the esteemed media panel. I don't know about esteemed. Yeah. <laughs> calling it esteemed. Media panel that represents 25% of the total ballot when it comes to the starters. So you both had to submit Eastern Conference starting five and a Western Conference starting five. Um, your Eastern Conference starters are pretty similar. Both include Kyrie Irving, Giannis Antetokounmpo, Kawhi Leonard, and Joel Embiid. They are identical except for the, what I'm going to call the second guard spot of Kemba Walker for Greg. Seiko, you've got Bradley Beal. This being a TV segment, you're now obliged to argue about it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, listen, I think both those guys are worthy. I just looked at and weighed heavier the work Bradley Beal has done since John Wall went down. A Wizards team, GA, that was out of it. You know, out of people's consciousness. We had kind of written them off. John Wall goes down, Bradley Beal is playing fantastic. I think he should be an all-star either way. Yeah. He could be a starter. He, you know, he, he, you could have him be one of the reserves. It doesn't matter. As long as he's on that team, I think you're doing right by him. Yeah, I, and I, I agree. I think both are going to make the team. I, I went with Kemba. One, he's been great from the start of the season. And two, as of today, they're a playoff team. Right. You know, and so to me, I, I, I do think, because their stats are actually very similar. Yeah. But I just think, you know, ultimately you want to reward success, too, in winning. So that's why, for me, I ended up going with Kemba. But I'm like you, Seiko. I think both guys are all-stars with how well they perform this season under adverse conditions for both teams. I actually put Ben Simmons on my ballot. 
And I think you could make an argument for yes, three of those guys. I, I think he'll be winning, there, too. If you reward and winning, Ben Simmons. Yeah. So the, the winning argument, yeah. that's kind of where I no felt. No question. In the Western Conference, again, you, you agree on four of them. Steph Curry, James Harden, Kevin Durant, and Paul George. Greg has the king. Sekou went with the brow. Yeah, I, I just looked at the fact, again, it goes back to before LeBron went down, they were a four seed with that same team, in essence, that we saw from a season ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, and his numbers had been off the charts again. And in Anthony Davis, as much as I love him, again, he's going to be an all-star. I just thought overall the fact that the team success just hasn't been there. Uh, that was the one area where I had an issue. And the interesting thing for me, the guy that probably is more deserving based on win, uh, team success is Jokic. Yeah. Because yeah. Jokic has been right. incredible uh, this year. So, again, he's definitely going to be on the It'll, team. For sure. But I, I think, again, part of this is who do you want to see as well when you talk about the starters? And right. So I, I ultimately went with LeBron. Yeah, and if, if Anthony Davis was any less of an unbelievable, you know, freak of nature in this league, it would be easier to leave him off somebody like this. I just figured when you look at his body of work, independent of the context of the Pelican struggles this season, he's always up here on that next level of the, uh, the handful of guys in the league mm-hmm. who can do what he does on a, on a regular basis. Hard to leave him off, but of course, people will say, well, you know, why are you penalizing LeBron for missing games when you didn't penalize Steph Curry for the yeah, same yeah. thing? Yeah, so you. There, so why there are you is, doing that? <laughs> so there is a part of me that kind of scratches my head and says, do you, do you knock LeBron for being out? Is it, is it a recency bias because he's been out <laughs> lately? You, you know, Because nobody's going to have a, a Western Conference All-Star starting five without LeBron James. It, yeah, it wouldn't right. make sense. But, of course, I went Except there. for you. Wait, except no. you did. <laughs> and yet you did it anyway, I know. didn't you? I figured somebody had to shake it. There you go. Right. I'm with you on AD, though. I mean, some guys, the numbers, the, the talent is just so overwhelming. You almost, yeah. almost overwhelmed. Shout out to record. Paul George, though, for playing oh, yeah. his way onto that list. Man, he's, he's been, been awfully good this year for the Thunder.